today I'm releasing a Commodore 64 virtual reality emulator for the Oculus Quest. It's currently live on SideQuest. I also have submitted it to App Lab, which might take quite a while. Apparently it takes like six weeks to get things approved on App Lab, somebody told me. Or if you want, you can also directly download the APK from GitHub and sideload it yourself. I'll put the links in the video description. Okay guys, I've been working on this thing for over a year and I'm releasing it today. It still has a few things that need to be done. I need to learn how to properly completely optimize it. There's a few things where you'll find some stuttering like if you move around the room, but just sitting in front of the Commodore 64 and using it, you'll be fine. This was based off of the original one that I released for the Oculus Go a year or so ago. And that one was based off of one done by Jonas Minberg. I finally got in touch with him. He saw my video, he liked what I did. He said he didn't know anybody had any interest in it and he actually forgot about the project. He ended up sending me the project files and I took it from there. Now, all of the Commodore 64 emulation backend stuff was all done by Jonas. He used the Vice Lib Retro, Vice Lib Retro library. I got the controller conversion working. He already had controller functionality built in, but I got it working for the Quest, and I got them both working. I also got it so that the Commodore 64 has a fully working keyboard. I also upgraded all the models. Getting the Commodore 64 to have a fully working keyboard is something that I'm very excited about. It's huge to me which means you don't need a Bluetooth keyboard anymore, and you don't need a gamepad. The controllers, the Quest controllers, are all you need to use this. Now, this application does not come with any ROMs whatsoever. Again, it comes with no ROMs. But they're super easy to add. All you have to do is create a folder in the root of your Quest named C64, drop your D64 image files into that, and they will auto generate, they will auto spawn as floppies on the desk when you fire up the emulator. All right, now how do you use this? Let me tell you. In order to load a floppy disk, just point at it with one of the controllers, press the trigger button, it'll load itself onto the controller like you're holding it, and then point at the floppy drive and then pull the trigger again and it will load into the floppy drive. Now, if there's already a floppy in the drive, it will take the floppy that's in the drive out and exchange it with the one that you have in your hand. Now, originally this was set up so that you could have a different image on each side of the floppy, like you could load side A and side B, but now with this script that auto-generates floppies based on files, it's just the same image on each side of the floppy. You could flip it upside down, but it's just, it's just the same file. Now, once you have a floppy loaded in the drive, you can just press F1 and then enter to fast load the floppy. And if you want to disable fast load for some reason, just press the power button on the side of the C64 and then press F3 and it will reboot the Commodore 64 without any fast load. And then you can actually type load, load, quote, star, quote, comma, eight, comma, one, press enter to load the floppy in like slower time and then press type run to run it. Now, if you wanna type on the keyboard, just point your controllers at the keyboard and pull the trigger on whatever key you wanna type with. Now, if you want to simulate holding down a key, for example, if you want to type load, quote, star, quote, comma, eight, comma, one, the quotes, you have to hold down shift and then the number two to get the quotes. So you have to press button X. You have to hold down button X. It simulates holding down a button. If you hold, press the triggers, it just simulates tapping the button once, even if you still hold down the trigger. This way you can also use special characters and change colors and all that stuff. The only key that doesn't work on this thing is the British pound key. I couldn't find a mapping for that, so that one doesn't work. Okay, now the left thumbstick is the joystick for games on the Commodore 64, and button A, button A is the joystick button. So in your left hand you have the joystick for games on the Commodore 64, and in your right hand you have the joystick button, which is button A, the lower of the two buttons. Okay, if you find that the joystick is not working, you may need to swap the ports. Just point at the tack joystick on the desk, Pull the trigger and it will swap your joystick port. Now the right thumbstick is locomotion. You can move around the room. Now I couldn't assign rotation to another thumbstick because the other one is the Commodore 64 joystick. So you're just gonna have to turn yourself around hokey pokey style if you wanna rotate. Now most of the objects you can interact with, you can pick them up 
but this comes at a cost of performance even if you're not actually picking them up. So in my quest to optimize this application, I may end up making all these other extraneous interactions null and void in interest of performance. Now I have placed a ton of memorabilia in this room. I hope you guys like it. It's been a lot of work on it. I had the funnest time hunting for things, trying to get ideas to put in this room. If you guys have any more ideas other than what's already in here, please let me know. I'm excited to add anything else. Now I'm hoping to add a lot of other features like being able to turn the lights on and off. Maybe. Um, I'm wanting to add different models, Commodore 64 models, uh, 1701 monitor models, 1541 drive models, even the joystick model. I want to make it so users can switch between different models. The current Commodore 64 model is like the best model I could find. Like I found, I scoured the web for all these models, okay? I have tons of all these different kinds of models and that is the best Commodore 64, that is the best 1701 and that is the best floppy drive. Now I have other ones that still look really good, they're just like not perfect. Uh, but they're lower polygon and they would be better for performance so that's why I want to make it so people can switch to maybe a lower polygon model maybe on the Quest 1 maybe I can make a version that works with the Go I don't know but that's what I have in the works so again the current models in there I have decimated them to lower the polygon count but they're still not really low polygon so I do want to be able to switch different models out I'm still a Unity and a C Sharp noob so if there's anybody out there that can maybe send me a script, a C-sharp script, that I can learn from on how to switch between different objects. That would probably speed things along. Let me know. So again, there's a lot of improvements I need to make to this, but the main functionality is there. Consider this a beta release. I was taking so long to get this done, I was like, look, I'm just gonna get this thing out so people can use it now, and then I'll just continue to improve it and make more releases of it. Now, I did also plan on releasing at the same time a, a Windows version, like a PC VR for the Rift and for the Rift S, but for some reason at some point the Windows part of it crashes now. I have an earlier version I might release, it doesn't have a room, <laughs> and I'm not even sure if it has all the functionality that this one currently has. I might release that just so people on the PC can use it. Let me know what you think, let me know if you want me to do that, but it's just like a desk with the Commodore 64 on it in the middle of nowhere with like a sky and that's it. Um, it but it works I mean it, it still works so let me know if you want me to release that if you like this please remember to share this video to like it please leave a comment I really hope that I find other people that really enjoy these retro computers and to enjoy it in virtual reality please subscribe to my channel stay tuned for future updates on this application and I'll catch you guys later thanks